I have the pre-trial notes on the Doyle case. That fulfills the right to know. Obligation, if that's what you wanted. I think I have the uh, right to know more than that, Julia. Stop. Public defenders don't spill their guts to district attorneys. So you um, deny any prior knowledge of this subtle instrument of party pleasure? <laughs> Our uh, janitor informs me that he saw a very pretty young woman leaving this office on New Year's Eve. I think I could force a more complete description out of him than a ritzy-looking broad with outstanding legs. Maybe Catherine the nerve stopped by. Maybe he's still in the building. Would you like to meet him? All right. You caught me. It was me. I thought that you were going to be here for me. I was, most of the evening. So I wanted to surprise you. Forget it, okay? You do surprise me, Julia. I was just so worried that I wouldn't be able to have children that when I got the doctor's report, I wanted to dance the night away. Well, it's distressing to think I let a lady dance alone. Don't worry. I didn't. Worse yet. Well, now that we've got the mystery of the noisemaker solved, I have some work in my office. Not so fast, Counselor. I feel cheated. I missed my own party. Maybe next year. Maybe tonight. Sorry. This time I'm the one with the full calendar. Well, lucky for me, there are 363 other evenings in the year. How booked can you be? I'll let you know. I hope I'm interrupting something. Saved by the master of time and space. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cruz, uh, no. Stay away from me, mate. <laughs> I know that our arrangement has hit a few rough spots, so don't you think it's kind of crass to be interviewing new candidates already? But sometimes you are so disgusting. That's when you like me most. You're going to have to buy your own lunch. I've already eaten. And you have to get back to the office. Now you're on the right track. Julia, as far as I know, no child was ever conceived through osmosis. Did you read that someplace? No, I learned it from my father when I was 12. So as long as we have the go-ahead from the doctor, what do you say we move this project from research to reality? Oh, good evening. Yes, I know what the hour is. I've been telling time for years, Julia. Because I need to see you in my office right away. I, uh, I've been looking over your notes for the, um, Doyle case. I've never seen anything more slipshod. Well, if you don't come, then you can hear what I have to say at the press conference I'm going to hold tomorrow morning. Yeah, I thought so. Good. I'll see you shortly, then. Oh, dare you threaten me with a press conference? I gave you every one of those notes by myself. They're brilliant. Right on time and as I rate as expected. Happy belated New Year, Julia. Still want to roast me? I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's the first. <laughs> when did you plan all this? After our little visit this morning, it occurred to me that New Year's can be whenever we want to make it. I mean, the Chinese have theirs. Even Einstein agreed with me that time is relative. Einstein agrees with you. I hope our child doesn't inherit your ego. Speaking of our offspring, since we have an event to look forward to in 1987, I thought a little celebration was in order. What would New Year's be without music? What was I thinking when I said you? Chalk it up to a flash of genius. May I have this fertility dance, Miss Wainwright? I promise you I'm not going to rest until you're properly pregnant. <laughs> if that's all you wanted, you could have just come to my place. <laughs> and miss the look on your face when you walk through the door? 
Not on your life. This is our night, Julia. Something about it seems special. I think it's the expense of some time. Did you know that if our son is conceived in this office, that by the time he's 21, he will become district attorney? That's in the city charter. And what if she wants to follow in her brilliant mother's footsteps and go into private practice? Fortunately, everything that I ordered will keep. I think I'm very hungry. Well, business first, then. <gasps> what is it? I feel like we're being watched. Well, he is the father of our country. He'll understand. If you say so. I definitely say so. Mason. <laughs> My grandfather looked just like George Washington. I'm sorry, George. You're killing the mood. country, but he and Martha didn't fare too well in the offspring department. I think we'll do better. Not even a question in my mind. It's our baby. Yeah, do you remember the first time that you ever had shampoo? Oh, yeah. I was seven years old. My father was having some sort of dinner party, and I managed to sneak a glass from the kitchen. After gulping it down, I decided it was appalling. No. I mean, a, a champagne story where it, it meant something to you. Oh, sentimental Julia Wainwright and murder. <laughs> you don't have to answer it. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I do remember that momentous occasion. You're making fun of me. Get up. No, not at all. Well, you've heard my champagne story. Let's hear yours. Well, I don't have something. Oh, come on. No, I really don't. I mean, I remember as a kid watching watching the romantic movies. I don't know. I was always too serious. I thought I could never see silly romance as being important. So, no, I don't have any champagne stories. You do now. Maybe I do. Listen, I don't have any strawberries, but there's still the late supper I had planned. You hungry? I'm starving. Should I dress for dinner? I think you look fine. <laughs> Won't take a minute. You're, um... Uh... Not going to believe this, but I have to get right down to the police station. I'm sorry. Hey, that happened.
I don't think you'd trust me, and I'm not quite sure why. A few hours ago, in this very office, we were so close. What happened? Mason, you know better than to confuse business with other aspects of our lives. I'm sorry, Julie. I've got to do my duty regardless of our personal relationship. Mason, what are you doing here? I think you know. Does it have anything to do with me? Everything. I came because I couldn't stay away any longer. I know it's not part of our deal, Julia. But I've fallen in love with you. Mason? I want to marry you, Julia. And be your father. Give us a chance to be a family. I want you. I want you. What are you doing? Hi, I was just, uh... Just trying to make a little hay while the prosecution sleeps. For heaven's sake, Mason, you don't really think I'm snooping on you, do you? I moved your damn papers because I was trying to make you more comfortable. Because for one idiotic moment, it reminded me of times when... When what? When we were close and intimate. You need me to be more specific. I said that. I'm sorry. Just scratch that from the record. This is life, not a trial, Julia. Wouldn't know that from the way that you've been giving me the third degree. Well, forgive me for not guessing immediately that you've done a sudden about face and gotten sentimental about a brief encounter. After all, any time in the past I displayed any human feelings for you, I was subjected to a lecture about how our involvement didn't mean anything. It didn't. I mean, I mean it doesn't. I wasn't getting sentimental when I was I was looking at you asleep. I was just trying to figure out why I let somebody like you be the father of my child in the first place. I don't... Uh, to hell with it! I'll see you in court! The mineral water, please. Why don't you order milk instead? You're going to be drinking for two before long. You might as well start practicing. Go away, Mason. I was trying to enjoy myself. I have a suggestion. Why don't we confine our animosity to the courtroom? Oh, I see. In the, in the morning, you accuse me of spying on you. And then in the evening, you're the best of buddies. Is that the way it was? Maybe I overreacted a bit, but we're both professional, Julia. There's no reason why we can't get along outside the office. Oh, yes, there is. There's a very good reason, because you're the same man inside the office as you are outside of the office. Even when I'm asleep? You're just a little more manageable that way. 